<laughs> that looks kind of cool. Hello, and welcome to the twelfth episode of the Weeb Roundup. <laughs> we were oh struggling God. to think of an intro, and then I just decided to point a laser pointer into a camera, and I was actually mesmerized because I'm twelve. No, it's because we're all cats, and you and you're just really used to having Julius around, you know. And there, there's your Julius. Uh, throw Julius on the screen. There you go. There should, there, there's your Julius for the episode. <laughs> there's your. There's your Julius. I'm very, very tempted to open the door and just see if he will come in real quick. But I'm going to hold back because instead of talking about my cat, well, let's let's say that if you do right now, then on your green screen, will green screen footage of you later doing that at the end of the podcast and just overlay it behind you. So just look, look by if it happens, it's happening behind you right now. Oh my god. But uh, so we missed a week and there's a bit of a reason uh, for that. But before anything else, uh, part of the reason is uh, things have been a little rough lately. I've been really, really busy just to kind of give everyone a bit of a update on like what's been going on. It's like I've been streaming, obviously. I've been doing like content creation stuff when I have time. I've been working on a lot of projects for work. And the other thing is uh, this month, uh, starting on, if I can find my mouse, July 20th, I'm actually going to be out of town. And one of the things that I've been having to prep for and prep stuff for is I'm going to be at uh, San Diego Comic-Con with the rest of the Geek Culture Explained dudes. And we're going to be down at San Diego Comic-Con, and we're going to be making content. It's going to be a real good time. So if you happen to be in the area and you see my dumb ass, uh, feel free to drop in and, and, and say hi. And then afterwards, when we're done, I'm probably going to sit down and record a podcast about it with everybody. And uh, you two are going to get to hear all about San Diego Comic-Con and how I got to see the first 20 minutes of the new Dragon Ball movie. Oh, okay, cool. And I'm going to get nice. to go to Piccolo's house because apparently Piccolo's house is going to be there. <laughs> Piccolo, yeah, there's a house not Piccolo, there. Piccolo's house is going to be there. Oh, Piccolo is also going to be there. They're having his voice actor come, like his Japanese one. But that's not important to me. What's important to me is I get to sit down in Piccolo's living room and then get to see if Piccolo has a bidet in his we bathroom. Should... We should just be thankful. I don't think Piccolo uses the bathroom, Nick. <laughs> I think I think I think Piccolo, uh, Piccolo is just happy to have a home after thirty years of not having a home. Are you saying Namekians don't shit? I'm saying we don't know the answer to that question. Because we've seen Piccolo eat. It has to go somewhere. What if he just turns it into energy? Just turns it all because he's like a plant. I'm sure there are plants that shit. They do. There are. But like it's different. So like me so like maybe he doesn't need one. All right. What if he so doesn't even what if he doesn't even have an ass? We don't know. Never seen it. Have we I feel like we have to have canonically seen Piccolo's ass. Prove it. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Google image search Piccolo's ass. Screenshot. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> He's actually doing it. Apparently if you look up Piccolo's ass, it just shows you clips from po from Dragon Ball Superhero. I'm losing my mind because I just looked this up and on Comic Vine there is a thread that asks the question, does Piccolo have a butt? So someone else has asked this question before us. And so far, looks pretty inconclusive. I'm seeing some slurs getting thrown around in this thread. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is 14 years old. It's pretty inconclusive. Neither Lana or I are correct, which means I am correct. I will, I will fight for this. Piccolo definitely has a cake. But we'll have to find out. But yeah, that's essentially what I've been kind of up to is I've been really busy with just a bunch of stuff. We've been prepping for Comic-Con. 
and you'll be seeing some of the stuff that I'm posting up relatively soon, hopefully. And other than that, uh, I ended up watching like all of the boys over the course of like two days. How was it? It's a really, really good show based on a really garbage comic. That's See, fair. Okay, all I know about the boy is that apparently the Homelander is obsessed with tit milk. No, yeah. Yeah, that's like a big thing. And it was definitely not that way in the comics, but if funnily enough, breasts, breast milk still comes up in a really, really, really gross way in the comics. It's honestly worse, but it's with a completely different character. But speaking of breast milk, how have you been doing, Kai? <laughs> Oh my god. No. <laughs> you didn't pin that segue on me. Okay. Um I've been doing all right. I uh, started working at uh, my local card shop uh just this week and that's been doing doing really good. Um other than that, I became a Yu-Gi-Oh judge. Uh went to a couple of, um well I already mentioned the, the regionals we went to. But uh yeah. Just been, just been, you know, uh getting just getting there. Uh, I did, however, you know, do some like sketch sales and stuff, which uh, if you guys wanted to see the sequel to, uh, you know, your fortress by family smoking weed, we now have Lloyd Forger by family smoking weed. I'll it's incredible. Please. It's absolutely incredible. I tried. I tried. I really did. <laughs> you don't need the Mona Lisa when you can have Lloyd For Forger smoking weed as the sequel drawing to your forger smoking weed. This See, is so going to be Jacob, the way Spy Family ends. Oh yeah, so so by the way, so my friend Jacob, after I posted that drawing, was immediately like, so when's the dog gonna smoke weed? <gasps> but but when does Anya smoke weed? <laughs> when she graduates. When she's old enough. When she, when she graduates. When the mission is over, she is over the age of 21, and she has she is of sound mind and body to purchase marijuana. You are allowed to draw her smoking exactly candy cigarettes. She's just yes. got a candy cigarette, but she still has the bags under her eyes. She's like living my life is hard, Bond. And then Bond is just like Ooh. No, Bond is Bond is on another like planet, like quite literally. He is he he is seeing so far into the future that he's like, yo, these don't even be humans anymore. No, it's <laughs> Where just am it's, I? Okay, so what it is is it's going to be Anya Forger lying down with Bond, and it's just that scene from Undertale where oh they just start God. flying through space. That's what it's going to be. It is going to be I the swear, best man, scene in like Undertale. I swear, man, that's your default, and I don't blame you. It's a good scene. <laughs> it's the best scene in Undertale. Like, straight up. But, Lana, how what goes it? What do you want it? from me? I, 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 how's it going <laughs> lately? I, 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 don't have, I don't have any of what you need. <laughs> I'm, I'm not interested in what you're selling to me. What's your offer? I don't have any offer. I don't want anything you're selling. Well, I'll have you know, you're going to be missing out on three Destroyer Phoenix Enforcers, seven Hershey bars, and like eight copies of Branded Fusion. That's as like, well as another eight you know copies what? of Branded in Red. That's only like a hundred dollars. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> no. that's not a lot. He's not, the, not that gonna be... Uh... It's it's not as powerful as it was. No, I'm oh, aware. No. Oh no. What am I gonna do without one hundred dollars that I have to sell? Yeah, but Lana, what about those Hershey bars? Man. I fucking love Hershey bars. Hershey bars are actually the fucking best. I just they're, had to buy really it. Good. I just had to buy a fuck ton of Hershey bars for my job like a bunch of candy for like 4th of July. Like we had to make a bowl of candy and like the, the easiest thing to buy was just a, one of those bulk bags of Hershey bars. Oh, yo, God. I, after we record this podcast, I might make like a midnight run to the pharmacy and just buy up like a bunch of king size Hershey bars. It is after July 4th. Who knows? Maybe I might be able to get lucky and like swoosh right in and be like, hello, can I get like, 12 Hershey bars, man. 
it's really for me it's just really been um nationals prep i don't really have anything interesting going on because i'm kind of tunnel visioning really hard i've got to get my covid booster tomorrow or else i can't participate Ooh, yeah no no i get you there so i'm so i'm going in for that at one o'clock and then right after that i have i pick up my dad from the airport and then i have physical therapy right after that i have a day tomorrow wow so i'm uh i'm just writing a show on top of all that well we're well, we're making a schedule uh, tomorrow and tonight of like my week, my usual week, just to see like exactly how much free time I actually have and how much I should be putting towards like nights of sleep because I don't naturally sleep eight hours. Um, I kind of sleep in intervals. So um, it's, t- it's time to just kind of sit down and figure out like when I'm going to be sleeping in my day to day just so I'm ready for the tournament and just so I know um, – how much how many resources i really have uh to work on my show uh over the course of the next few months because i really want to get more done than i've been getting done so to me it's sounding like all three of us in one way or another have been on the grind set so hard that we are all slowly turning into dust being crushed under the boot of capitalism perhaps yeah, that's pretty accurate but uh, that doesn't matter because the boot of capitalism is currently running uh, plenty of events, such as the uh, recently finished Anime Expo. Oh, yo. Yeah, well, there's that, a lot oh. with Anime Expo, but there is one other thing I want to go into before we go into the show proper with Anime Expo. Mm-hmm. And that is uh, the format. So I think we've kind of finally decided on what we're going to be doing for the format moving forward. And it's looking like because when we started this, a lot of the big idea was it was going to be an excuse for us to watch a lot of new anime and like keeping up with a bunch of new anime and deciding what it is that it, uh, we're going to be watching. But then this season came out and other than one show that I'm like looking at both Lana and Kai being like, OK, I need you both to watch this. I'm going to tie you both down into chairs and like hold your eyes open so that you actually watch it i.e. biscuit hammer uh there's nothing else that like uh everyone is just being like oh hey yeah we can just sit down and watch that so what we're likely gonna do is we're just gonna sort of pick whatever that may or may not be relevant or interesting to us and kind of just taking more of the book club approach that we'll be doing with jujutsu kaisen and so my plan is hopefully by next uh episode uh, we'll have decided everything that we're going to be watching for the next little while, and then I will release the list. So people, if you all are interested, can kind of watch along and we can have all of that big discussion on uh, just how cool Naruto was or whatever it is that we're going to be watching. I honestly don't know just yet. I really love season two of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and grilled cheese. I love grilled cheese. All right, I'm going to. Some of this grilled cheese is attack mode. I ain't delicious. got a job with this is totally and back and delicious. <laughs> this is totally delicious. Ah. Pegasus wants to design me to be a card designer for it. Look, he was it's apparently really, really good at he was a really yeah, good artist. For whatever reason, he was really good at painting Ayers Rock. And then he made Jaden his own fucking Hero City 2. Cause he's like, sure, take it. Take a skyscraper too. I actually forgot he made skyscraper too. <laughs> skyscraper two was like, okay, just to go off on a tangent here for a second. There's like back when I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh, there was like this point where skyscraper two was like the best card ever. Little city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, gr- it wasn't the best card ever, but it was like good. It was like exactly good enough that like, Little City was a playable deck. Exactly. And then I know that there was a while where I continued to play Little City, but instead of using uh, a Skyscraper 2, I used the Seal of Ori <laughs> Which may have been the most jank thing ever, but it also are we talking got like games. Are we talking like the upper deck? The Seal of Ori No, not like the, the upper one deck de- one, like the official Seal of Ori Oh, okay, okay. 
and like I would play the I would play Seal of War and Kalkos, and my deck didn't special summon really from the extra deck, so I didn't really give a shit. The only way I ever special summoned from the extra deck is if I stole someone else's tuner or I played Starlight Road. You remember Starlight Road? Oh my god. These oh, new sets God. will not let me forget Starlight Road, man. The amount of fucking reprints of Starlight Road that I've gotten. I hate this. Oh, God. Shoutouts to Starlight Road being, like, one of the worst fucking negates ever. Oh, God. But that's essentially what we're likely going to be doing moving forward. Uh, we're still going to be working out some of the kinks, but in general, we're going to be going just a little more casual with what we're watching. And it's like, oh, is it something really interesting that we're kind of in about? Yeah. Uh, is this, but that also means we're it, we're going to be open to watching some older shit now, which means, I don't know, I might actually use this as an excuse to finish Trigun. But speaking of Trigun, mm. and a whole bunch of other shit, <sighs> Anime Expo happened, like, over the weekend of this recording, and uh, we got a lot. There's a lot. Um, I'm going to pull up uh, the Bible here and be like, man, that's that, that's 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 pretty great. <laughs> We're getting season two of Penny and Stocking because fuck 12 years, 12, 12 years, goddamn years. They made us sit on that ending. And like, I know people who, you know, apparently, it, like you know, that, that ending was that so bad that there are people who I know gaslit themselves into believing that it didn't happen, that like the credits rolled and there was no after credit scene. Period. I wish I could have done that. And no OVA. Yeah, and no OVA. <laughs> yeah, because like, for those that don't know, uh, Penny and Stocking was produced by Studio Gainax, the, the people that made Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann and Evangelion and whatnot. It was their next thing right after finishing Gurren Lagann. You can see Gurren Lagann characters in background shots. Exactly. Mm. And like, essentially what happened was uh panty and stocking finished and that's essentially when gynax started bleeding all of their talented staff like ano and everyone had left and then hiroyuki imaishi which was basically the head of uh that department i believe in gynax left and like took a like everyone talented with him and made his own studio called studio trigger and now it, apparently the rights to Panty and Stocking have been given back to Studio Trigger and Hiroyuki Imaishi. And now we're getting Panty and Stocking Season 2 being made by Studio Trigger. And I'm still losing my fucking mind that this is a thing that is real and exists. Like... I literally did not believe the announcements when I saw people tweeting about it and being like, oh my god, this is not a drill. And I'm just like, you're lying to me. You're lying to me. You're absolutely lying to me. Because like, there's no, because I'm not an anime expert. There's no way I could know. You would absolutely, you're absolutely lying to me. And then I see like a post follow from like Anime News Network, then Crunchyroll. And I'm like, okay, no, it's real. Wow. Like, <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't I think I've ever been trolled by an anime expo presentation. You know, like I've never, no, no one's ever like told me something from anime expo and been like, or uh, been like, yeah, this is totally true. And then it come out to be a lie. At least for me. Has that ever happened to you guys? No, but with how, like, your people are on Twitter, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, everyone w at the panel made a pact to be like, we're going to tweet this out, and then, like, we're, we're all lying. <laughs> I, oh my god no that that that's too that's a cons that's called a conspiracy theory kai i want to do that that is a conspiracy theory <laughs> i am going to conspire with everyone at comic con in hall h to say that like marvel versus capcom 4 was announced officially and is real and i'm going to gaslight the entire internet about marvel versus capcom 4 again <laughs> <laughs> because i've already made one fake announcement video for mvc4 i'll do it again but like i know uh when i heard about panty and stocking season two i was streaming monster hunter at the time 
And we were just having a good time. We were mashing. I looked down at my Twitch chat and they're like, Nick, Nick, they just announced Panty and Stocking season two. And I'm like, you're gaslighting me. You are lying to me. And then someone links me the tweet and I have a nervous breakdown on stream. (laughs) It it was literally the happiest I had ever been on stream. And then I continued to play Monster Hunter and everything was great. And then they also told me about the new Trigun and the new Trigun, which like for Panty and Stalking, they're just like, oh, hey, we're making it. And then they show off new Trigun and uh, the new Trigun anime is going to be like CG made by Studio Orange. So like there's some, there's some people who are not happy with the new Trigun. I, I don't mind. I don't give a shit. I think Vash looks fine. Mm-hmm. But like. It's really crazy how many people are just outraged. And, and just, I'm just like, just, I'm assuming Ill. just because they changed the design. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nothing. It's really nothing to it. Whatever. Freaking. It's not, it's not a Jean, uh, Jean arc hair situation. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. It's, it's honestly not that huge of a change, really. It's not like, um, it's just he looks like he took a shower. Yeah. He, he looks more like of a modern take. Like there's other shows that are getting re- rebooted even in this season um, that changed their main character's look. Uh, like uh, I, you know, obviously I'm talking about um, a Tokyo Mew Mew Mew. Um, the main character instead of having pink hair, it's now like just red. And like I don't personally, I don't like it. I don't like I don't like her having red hair. Well, that's but, a little uh, different from like an entire facial restructure. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean. It, it, it's it's like the difference between like you know changing. Yeah, they, they changed his entire face in his outfit versus she just changed her hair. And I know there's people who like are, are mad about that. See, the, one of the things that I kind of see with it, uh, and this is my take on this, is uh, he looks a lot less masculine. He mm-hmm. looks, for all intents and purposes, he looks like a twink. He does not look like a 90s anime superhero. He doesn't look super buff. He doesn't look super gruff. He kind of looks like a twink. And... I can kind of see why people would be like, oh, why would you make him this like skinny little like pretty looking dude? And I'm over here just like, give me more of that. I want him to be pretty. I I want to be able to look at this character and question myself. I think my only problem is the glasses. You know, like I, I like the jacket a lot. I think the jacket is a great uh, take. And uh, I think, like, not having his under outfit monochromatic was a good choice because, like, he's got like there's some there's some grays and like blacks, but there's like browns, too, you know, and um, I, I just don't like how big his glasses are. I think if they were yeah. a little smaller, I'd be cool I, with I it. I think that's definitely I don't, like... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think with this body design, uh, the old glasses would look good, though. Oh, the old no, glasses absolutely. would look so weird. Because, like, those glasses, in my opinion, worked because of the fact that with Trigun's design language, especially with Vash, the limbs were, like, stupidly long. And, like, you almost had these, like, clamp-esque character designs, if you ask me, where, like, Vash's limbs in general were incredibly long. He stood incredibly tall. And, like, he didn't exactly look human. Again, he looked kind of like a superhero type dude with just how built that motherfucker was. And I feel like with this design, they're wanting to make him look a little bit more human. But it also kind of has that aspect of making him look like, you know, less supernatural, less less bulky. And I think a lot of people really like that old aesthetic. But I think it's going to be one of those things where after the first few episodes, people are going to see that the slaps because it's studio fucking orange and everything that I've seen from them has been absolute fucking bangers. They've been really good. Like I everything I've seen of Jose Lucuni, B stars, like they're they're really good. They know exactly what they're doing when it comes to taking 2D influence in their art style and like, you know, transitioning it over to like a 3D uh aesthetic it's really good yeah like these are the people that took the ideas from guilty gear Xer, and they're like what if we actually did that in anime and it's like oh they finally someone like, gets it there's a reason why when we were talking about um vash's design off off the podcast uh lana had brought up like it's it's just strive it's it's just vash strive 
Oh yeah, it's it's literally the difference between Guilty Gear Double X Accent Core and like Guilty Gear Strive. It straight up is. If there's one thing about Vash new new uh, Trigun though, if I'm comparing it to Guilty Gear Strive, is that goddamn they aren't afraid to like actually have color. Because if there's one thing about Guilty Gear Strive that makes me want to punch Daisuke in the face, Daisuke, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I love you. Please give me a job. Uh, it is that new Trigun is actually not afraid to be colorful. And I fucking adore that. I think I just found like an optimal uh, outfit redesign that they could have done for Vash the Stampede. Oh. Yeah, like I think that this is this would have been a perfect rendition. And if they put this in the Trigun anime, I think like people would have really received it well. Okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> I think if uh, he, he's got a red coat... <laughs> Blonde hair. A fake think, arm. Uh, a fake arm? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that we've got something here. We just put a gun on him. You have to give him three guns. It's not try gun unless he has three guns. That's true. <laughs> when Vash pulls out three guns, I don't know. I've never watched the fucking show. But oh you know what? This Four is giving me an ex- made this joke. <laughs> oh my god! But this is giving me an excuse to finally fucking finish Trigon because I've had the DVD box set in my house for over ten years, and I've never fucking finished. <laughs> so you know what? M- maybe we might actually we might book club Trigon. I wouldn't mind doing that. I do long. it just for the banger opening. It's like twenty four episodes, I think. Yeah, we could do that. We could maybe do that. I think I think book clubbing Trigun would be real fun. So uh, we'll we'll think it over. But also at Anime Expo, they revealed a few other things. They revealed like some footage of a new SD Gundam game. And that was pretty rad. And then everything else was like they showed the opening for Mob Psycho Three, which I'm a poser and I still haven't seen Mob Psycho Season Two. Kai, you can please hit me over the head for that. Yeah, no, season two is incredible. We we should definitely watch that. I need to watch Mob Psycho season two. And then uh, they showed the new opening for, uh, once again, Trigger produced Cyberpunk Edge Runners. OP. Yeah, but I will say about this opening, because, you know, there of course, it's just an opening reveal. Like, there's not much to glean from that. Um, what I do think is interesting about this opening is uh, because this is, you know, like Trigger doing like, a, like actually doing a Netflix show and not just Netflix throwing their name on little what jack damia is saying it's a netflix original because i'm yeah st- i'm still fucking mad about that by the way netflix. oh my god um, yeah <laughs> like this this feels a lot more like you know they had uh connections to netflix and and like more so than they did with like brand new animal because like there were some nods to netflix and brand new animal but like not not like this where the intro feels it feels very kinetic and it feels very stylish and and like pop um and it's like this weird trend that like I'm noticing that is, is it's a good trend. Um, that it feels like Trigger is starting to become more art house with their choice, their choice and openings. That's good. That see that kind that's kind of weird to me because I I when I think trigger, I don't tend to think art house. And, right? and this is weird. It's, I, it's it's like there's there's like weird like compositions they'll start using, or like they'll they'll do some like uh very experimental color stuff. And like it, it'll work, it, and it's stylish, and it's very uh, provocative of like you know like what they were trying to do with Promare. But I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm like I'm excited to see where Trigger is going, but it's interesting that this style that Trigger is is almost evolving. Yeah, because because the thing that I always think of with Trigger, the first thing I always think of is like fancy junk food where they're taking the thing that i love as a kid right like they're taking like the gurren Lagen formula or they're taking like this like the idea of super robot shit or like some really crass shit and like then they fancy it up maybe they throw a little alcohol in it or something you know it's it, it's like what you get with like oh you're an adult and you like m- lemonade here's mike's hard lemonade it's the mike's hard lemonade of anime and oh like God. where it feels fancy ish 
but it's still junk foody at the soul, and that's what makes it great. And I'm and like, there's still soul there, but like, all you know what? I think I know. I think I know. I think it's because of that one interview that you showed me once of where they're like, oh, what was it? Imaishi that was doing it. I don't know if it was Imaishi. It was one of the artists being like, oh, look, he's making the drawing like more edgy. And oh, he's putting yeah, remember, lines yeah. down so skillfully. It, and he's just like, yeah, man, I'm just making it dirtier. Yeah, no, it was it was it's in the the Kill a Kill documentary. And it's um, I believe it's Akira Kamiya, like looking over Sushio's shoulder. And he's all and he looks at the camera and he's like, you can't really tell what's going on but uh he's and it looks like he's just making the drawings dirtier but he's like th- he's calculating like how he needs to make each stroke and it just hearts because sushio i'm just making the drawings dirtier <laughs> and everyone's everyone's laughing at the guy and they're just like you need to go into sushio boot camp now learn how to draw <laughs> and that's what i'm saying like that is the spirit of trigger the spirit of trigger is looking at something and being like was that a super doof duper like artful decision or is that just a dude doing something because he thought it looked cool that is the essence of studio trigger and like it, it's the reason why i feel weird calling it art house yeah because they I, and you, you you saw the opening right i have not actually seen the opening for cyberpunk edge runners i will okay, tell you, you right you, now you I'm know the what I, I think in that case you want to just watch it real quick All right, so Kai just tied me up and held me at gunpoint, and I got to watch the opening. And I just watched. What'd you think? So, I want to say that this feels not anime, and that was something you were kind of talking about with me as well, and that it didn't feel studio trigger. To me, this doesn't even feel anime. This feels like they were taking a lot of nods from 80s and 90s, like that uh, pulpy aesthetic. The type of thing you would see on like a direct-to-video like anthology or like something that you would see on TV late at night in the 80s or 90s that wouldn't come on until like three in the fucking morning. Like it has that kind of aesthetic to me. And, like, I think that it honestly looks really fucking cool. And I'm going to be real with you. I had no interest in the the Trigger Cyberpunk show. Really at all. And then I saw that opening and I'm like. I feel like I've been scammed because I have to watch this now. I have to support Netflix. (sighs) I mean, no one said you had to support Netflix. No, I got to support Netflix, because if I don't support Netflix, we won't get more cool trigger shows funded with Netflix money. And I want that. I mean, yeah, that is true. So you know what? I guess I'm watching Edge Runners. Fuck you, Kai. I mean, you're watching a a trigger show. I'm happy. I I know. (laughs) Love you, Kai. (laughs) Me too, man. Oh God. Because man, okay, like e- even just going back to other like trigger shows, like I've watched you in the past. Like I was re-watching a bit of Brand New Animal, and I was like, man, I remember watching this with you and just reacting to what was going on. That was Brand a New life. Animal was a good time. It was a good time. Oh my god. Brand new animal gets a lot of shit, I feel, and I feel like the majority of that shit is undeserved. It really is. Like there was a lot of like work that went into that show that you know made it really good yeah it was it wasn't like to the same level or effect as some of their other works but it was still strong definitely and like that's the thing with trigger is again as long as i'm having fun watching a trigger show most of the time i don't really care too much listen at the very least if you haven't seen brand new animal you look up the the baseball episode you'll 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 know the you'll baseball know. episode of brand new animal is like top five baseball episodes and i know that that's very specific but baseball episodes are usually some of the best episodes of anime and i will die on this hill i mean we got a baseball episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. we have a baseball <laughs> episode of dragon ball super but speaking say, of dragon ball super oh man I was, I was i was about to say the the baseball episode of dragon ball super is actually kind of hype it's really good. Uh, I still remember. They had the balls to recreate the Yamcha death pose. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. 
Nobody else had the balls to do that. Oh now, my god. Now everyone does it. So Dragon Ball Super today. Uh, so, so we're dating this episode. It, it was recorded on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, seems to have been seems to have been confirmed to uh, have a weekly Dragon Ball episode set after the Universe Survival arc in production that will be out next year. Um, there's also a new movie uh, after Superhero. So we're getting so we're getting dangerously, dangerously close to the end of Z. Uh, so like. But like, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna do Moro? Are they gonna do the arc that we're currently on um, with uh, with Super? I don't know. Uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like blow anybody up, and I'm not gonna spoil like any plot points or anything by like theory crafting what they're probably doing, or at least try not to. But like, because like everyone's heard like, oh, when's the Moro arc like coming? Or are they gonna skip it? And it's like maybe. So like, we don't know yet. But you know, it's it's Goku. It's Goku. It's, That's all you it's need. It's Goku. It's, it's Goku. Um. Yeah. So like Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Super, allegedly, if it's Dragon Ball Super, at least a Dragon Ball show, uh, will be coming. Uh, we can all pray that it's not like a GT remake or something. Or if it is, then. They've got like some really good people on it, you know. Like if that's what their if that's what their new game is. If it means um, we get a uh you know like a re-recording or like some kind of remix of uh that original op- opening for gx I'll, for gt I'll, or or sorry for for sorry gt god Yu-Gi-Oh on the brain that's i oh man <laughs> yeah you need to stop i need to stop so this is what the, happens when you work at a card shop yeah sure uh so so yeah the um yeah so you so like uh Dragon Ball Super is finally uh, coming back. It's been what? When did it? When did it end? Twenty sixteen. Oh God! That long ago? Twenty twenty seventeen. Universe. I I want to say it was like twenty seventeen. Twenty. Actually, I think it might have been like twenty nineteen. No, that's not true. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Okay, I was close. 2018 it ends and tw- it ended in 2018 or the manga ended in 2018 when the fucking anime end oh no i hate, I hate this show oh, <laughs> this show causes me anguish <laughs> any a- anyway it's been it's been an x amount of years um the manga so the mon- here's the problem like what we don't know, and this is something I should probably talk about before we wrap up anything on Dragon Ball Super um is if it's a manga adaptation because Broly and Superhero imply that they're manga adaptations. The manga is vastly different from the anime. Vastly. Like, a lot a lot of different things go on. A lot of the same plot points end the same. Like, 17 winning the Tournament of Power, basically. Uh, that still happens. Um, an, en- uh, an encounter between Ultra Instinct Goku and Jiren happens. Uh, but the beats take place in different ways. Yes. Um... The Frieza Goku epic gamer moment that everybody loves didn't happen. Like, um, but besides that, like, I do recommend like reading the manga. Like, you need to know like if if one of these is the same or, or if one of these is the same as the other, you might want to know the context. And the manga uh, for Dragon Ball Super up to the Tournament of Power is fairly short. Um, I believe that it's only like forty chapters. Which is way less than watching 134 episodes. You 134 know I mean? episodes of arguably a lot of nothing. Yeah, a lot of nothing happens in Dragon Ball Super sometimes. It, so like the anime also like kind of really bad. It's it mid. is not bad. It is inconsistent. Mid. Okay, all right. Yeah, I it's very. That is a way to put it. There, there's a lot of really, really shitty episodes, but there's yes. a lot of really, really good episodes. Yes. There's a lot of really, really good ideas. There's a lot of cool character designs and things they do and interactions that you wouldn't normally see. And people recognizing other people's strengths and weaknesses in a realistic perspective. But unfortunately, it's still all wrapped up in Dragon Ball, and sometimes they just can't keep their paws off of something good going on. So... With super with the super manga, they cut right to the chase. Like the, the like sometimes they pussyfoot about a bit, but usually by the end of the chapter, like they're back on the gr- on the grind. So, which cannon are they using? I don't know. 
I hope it's the anime, just because then people don't get really confused, and then I don't have to answer a bunch of really stupid questions. But, uh, because nobody's... Because there's going to be a vast majority of people who, like, if this is manga canon, they're not going to go, oh, it's a manga thing. They're going to go, why doesn't this make sense? This is ridiculous. Dragon Ball fans, rise up! Instead of, like, reading like a 20 chapters worth instead of, of reading and... 20 chapters they will demand toriyama's head yeah and that's dragon ball fans so you know so let's just we see don't how want that goes ink on paper we want blood and muscle and movement because i can't read even though i'm reading those subtitles right now no they're I watching want... the dub Oh my god, I don't even want to get started on dub onlys. Uh, oh, oh god. my god. You won't read a you won't read a fucking manga, but you'll watch fucking two thousand episodes of One Piece, you fucking swine. God. <laughs> Holy shit. I hate how so, you're technically talking about me. And it's <laughs> I, well, I, mean, I, I, guess haven't, I haven't seen one piece i haven't seen one piece but it's, it's one of those things where it's like yeah i tend to just watch anime mostly but that's literally just due to you know like my time and because like animation is my craft like i want yeah. to watch something that's in movement yeah but it's not but like you're like manga. it's not like your elitism not reading manga out of principle because it's right, not yeah. the anime show watch that's different yeah so so uh we've got that we've got so many shows coming back we've got hunter hunter coming like there's a lot of there's a lot of really good shows coming back at the same time bleach is, or not bleach bleach is back bleach berserk. is coming back berserk i was gonna say berserk that's the one that starts with a b um yeah like berserk is back like there's so many shows it really makes you wonder what year it is i'm thinking 2011 i, I want to say 2013 i'll take 2013 2013 had over 2006 yeah, because 2013, I believe, was when Hunter actually started. And, like, a bunch of the other shit was, like, still going. And then, also, I checked, Dragon Ball Super, the anime, ended in 2018. Yes. I, I'd rather it not be 20, 2006, because then the most the newest game video game that I played that year was Mega Man Battle Network 6. I think that I'm al good. That also means that Gurren Lagann didn't come out yet, so... Yeah. Also, 2006... Is further away from actually. Hang on. Time for math. So 2006 is closer to the release of Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and I want to be as oh far away God. from that as possible. <laughs> you don't want to be in 2008, is what you're saying. I do not wish to be in 2008. At least in 2013, you're between Kill a Kill and Penny and Stalking. Facts. So, yeah, I'm excited about the anime lineup. Um, I won't talk about any plot points in Super, and I won't, and I'm, I'm going to try to not talk about Super until we start getting some, like, some, like, video, you know, some until trailer. I, or some either sorts. until we get some video, we watch the Dragon Ball Super movie, or somehow we don't have any material to watch, and we just end up watching Dragon Ball Super on the book club. Oh, my God. If that happens... I was going to say, with the list that we have, you super over all those other shows look if that happens i'm if it happens it means i am dead and i have been replaced by a reptilian so if that happens call your local authorities my address will be found here my number is 555 5555 uh my address is 69 420 uh, Willingham Way, apartment nine. I hope that that's not a real address. If it is, I'm sorry. I guess someone's getting doxxed tonight. Oh, yeah, one is someone. getting doxxed tonight. And you want to know what else is getting doxxed? Tomodachi the cut. game. The Tomodachi yeah, the, game. It's, high, it's oh. time for the Lotta cut of a uh, Tomodachi game. Let's go. So... I mean, there, there's a lot to go over in this episode. I feel like a lot. What are you talking about? And, well, for for Tomodachi game in that episode. The, what are you talking was... about? What are you actually talking about? What happened? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me. 
what happened. There was actually. An, an, an entire game that would have lasted multiple episodes in any other instance in that show. It ran five chapters in the manga. That game? Yeah. Five chapters. That's absurd. These are monthly chapters, Kai. The, the amount of time it took for them to get through this game in this, in this anime was a blessing. Oh I am so God. happy. <laughs> well, I no, am that's so what I mean. like, happy like, this it game was, took it was fucking better, five yeah. minutes. Okay, so the game was fine. Here's the Lana cut. We're going to get through it. We're going to get out of it. We're going right. to We're gonna do it how we always do. All right, so the episode opens with this guy being like he's the leader of this to special edition of Tomodachi game, and Kokorogi is his uh, hostage. And and oh my god my brain a uh, yuichi oh my god <laughs> I, i'm so i i just i just thought it's of his so face of with that shit. i just thought of him licking the knife and it and it, and it made it all come back for a second <laughs> oh oh. is that much, so much of a shithead you're just like oh what the, what's that fucker's name i was like i was like what's his name i almost said shinji and i thought of shinji akari for a second and i was like that's the opposite of what i'm looking for <laughs> oh god what this is reminding me of it's making me think that you're dojima and you're just shouting Adachi, boom. Adachi, boom. Adachi, boom. <laughs> so here's Yuichi. So Yuichi is uh, like hyper over mansplains how a hostage situation works to Kokorogi. <laughs> yes. He does do and, that, and I and, and then and then she's like, and then and then the guy's like, here's the game. We're gonna be fucking stabbing and shit. We're going to stab and you're going to hurt and or she's going to hurt. But if she does it, it's a lot less damage. If you do it, it's three times as much damage every time. And Kokorogi's like crying every time she gets like touched even slightly. And you, so Yuichi, uh, being the being the nice guy that he is, and I, I did say that that way intentionally, uh, it takes all the hits. And, you know. Actually, whatever. Cool. He was a nice guy here, and Kokorogi saw him do that and was like, "Okay, Yuichi, I hurt you. Said that you were a murderer last time I saw you, and but I trust you. I trust you so much right now. I I have no choice but to trust you. There's nothing else in my life." And then Yuichi's like, "All right, that's awesome. I'm glad I could save you, Kokorogi. Now I'm gonna take care of business because I just got fucked, and I'm gonna and and because the game went." Uh, in like every time you uh, Kokoroki would get hurt, Yuichi would get hurt three times as much because he would stop her from getting hurt. Her fingernail was about to be ripped off, but Yuichi lost three. And this guy, what was his name? Someone get it for me. Hang on. Uh, the boys in the lab are on it. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I get can I get some computer on the, this guy's name? I hate this guy. So this guy. So this is uh this is Tomodachi game recurring character number three, and it's because this show knows Kuroki. that Kuroki. There we go. Uh, he was a fake Monabu. He was pretending to be Monabu, and he was the, pretending to be the admin of this game. Big spoiler alert for the end of the episode. This guy kidnapped Kokorogi because he was watching Tomodachi game and pretended to be the Tomodachi game people to be able to inflict pain on Yuichi. Why? You fall uh -huh. You fall Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, and we'll get to a couple things that are like my problem later, uh, because because there is a little bit of a plot inconsistency in this show or in this episode. Something something that just it just bugs me. Just it just it just bugs me. Uh, so uh, Kuroki uh is like I love watching your suffering, Yuichi. <laughs> Uh, well, I shouldn't use that voice. I, oh, I just love watching your suffering, Yuichi. Yeah, and then I mean, um, he's just Kanji Tatsumi. Yeah, seriously. And I, and and, and I, I, I don't know how I feel on the long run about Kuroki, just because of the because of manga thing. But right now, I'm just like you're insufferable. So this guy, he said, there's three qualities about him that make him a good leader. It's uh, that he's very smart. It's that he's uh. I know the third one, but what's the fucking second one? He's very <laughs> smart. <laughs> Is it that he's trustworthy? Uh, no, no, that's the third one because he'll oh. never. Uh, Wait, he'll, he'll never, never betray his friends. Is the third he'll one. never betray his friends. So all of his friends like believe in him. Um, he's smart. 
Fuck. The lab I boys are guys. on it. Yeah, yeah. Can we get the lab? Can someone get us Karoki's three qualities? <laughs> we're we're gonna have to do some editing magic here. It's probably fine. No, this is fine. We can look bad. <laughs> we can just look bad. We can look bad for Tomodachi game. It's Tomodachi game. How the fuck am I gonna remember the three qualities of Karoki? <laughs> Seriously, give me an answer. <laughs> I'm I'm looking, I'm looking, and I can't find it. Oh, oh, he's got courage. Oh. He's got courage. So so I couldn't find it, I just remembered it. So oh my God. He's, he's got he's got courage. So he's courageous, he's smart, and he never backed down backs down on his friends. Yuichi walks back in there, and she's and 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 Kokorogi's like, I'll come with you, Yuichi. And and Yuichi's like, Are you sure? Like, I'm gonna do some fucked up shit. You I'm sure about you to want do that? some I'm about to do some crazy shit. And he's got like black beast aura from blaze blue around him. And he walks in and activates blood cane and just looks at Kuroki and is like, Hey, Kuroki, why don't we play a game? And the guy, and the guy's like, what kind of game? And, uh, he's like rock, paper, scissors, of course. And if you win, you get 10 million yen. Doesn't everybody want him to win 10 million yen? And they're like, yeah, Kuroki. Yeah. We love you, Kuroki. Fuck. Yeah. And then, Kuroki's like, what's the, so what's the catch? And it's like, simple. If you lose whichever fingers you used in rock, paper, scissors, I'll cut off. <laughs> and and he's like, but I can't use uh, I can't use scissors. I can only use paper and rock because you fucked my hand up so bad. And he holds up his injured hand. And then Kuroki's like. Oh man, that's still I could still lose my whole all my fingers. And then he's like, "How about this? What about I also give one million yen to each and every person watching this if I lose?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, Kuroki, win us a million yen! You're our boss. We love you, Kuroki. We'd suck your cock for a million dollars, Kuroki." And then, uh, and then uh, he's like, "All right, I'll do it." And he licks his knife. And then, and then you each, he's like, "Yeah," and he licks his knife. <laughs> and, 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 oh, they're and then, licking the same knife, and then their <laughs> tongues touch. Yeah, then they make out, and then the show ends. They're both gay and trans. <laughs> they're both like, that, and, and is Kokoro that the only thing Tomodachi Game knows how to do? Is just say, "Oh yeah, the character's gay," and then just end yeah, the episode. Like, the character is dead, or the character licks a knife and is evil because of it. <laughs> because of specifically that, not because of the pre-established fact that they're evil, but because of their actions as they're being evil. So. Uh, so the game begins. Jank can pun, and then Yuichi puts out his. Oh wait, hold on. Kuroki spends about eleven minutes explaining to himself <laughs> yes. how the only way he can win is choosing paper, and and then and 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 then uh, Yuichi's like, "Well, I'm not throwing paper." <laughs> yeah, the, like so, so so you should so you shouldn't throw scissors, and uh, I can't throw scissors, so. You shouldn't throw rock. So you should throw paper. And he's like, I am going to throw paper. And then he's like, you're scared, aren't you? You're scared to throw a paper. You're scared to, you're scared to throw paper. You don't want to lose yeah, all five of your hands. Yeah, your you don't. Fingers, all five of your hands. Your hand. All five hands. Speaking of One Piece. Anyway, so. The. So. Of, so he throws paper and Yuichi uses his other hand to throw scissors. And then he's like, I win. <laughs> So basically, Koichi convinces Kuroki. Koichi. Koichi. Wow. Koichi. Oh my God. JoJo's now. Yeah, Koichi. Koichi, such a reliable guy. <laughs> He's <laughs> such a reliable guy that Koichi Hiro say, "I am going so, to force you to throw rock." Yeah. Uh, echoes. Make him throw rock. Okay, master. Let's fuck up the beach. <laughs> And he's technically throwing paper with both hands, so he wins. Yeah, he just crushes the scissors. So, <laughs> so if I, how do I beat paper when I can only throw paper? Two papers. Double. Two papers. <laughs> Two giant paint bubbles. So, uh, Kuroki is now convinced. Yuichi has effectively gaslit him into believing he can only throw paper to win the money, and so he throws paper. Yuichi throws scissors with his other hand, and it's game over. He loses. He's like, I win. And then Kuro and then they go through like fifteen minutes of people like talking about nothing. 
just basically just being like the the long story short of it is everyone get it get yuichi fuck that guy up and then they're like but you lost the game boss and he's like i don't give a shit about any of that and then they're like, all right, boss, let's get him. And then the Tomodachi game people show up. Uh, big titty lady, uh, big titty goth lady uh, show, uh, and Maria are like, yeah, let's uh, let's stop them for impersonating us. And let's get Yuichi to the hospital. And Yuichi's like, hold on, hold him down. And he's like, Hiroki, which finger do you want me to take first? And then the goth lady holds down his foot. Or her foot, her high heel on top of uh, Kuroki's hand, and he's like, "Come on, Kuroki, which one? I'm gonna get one." And then he passes out. Yeah, literally, he's like, "Oh, oh, I'm craving blood because I'm too busy losing my own blood." And he loses I so really much need blood, blood, he passes out. I really need blood. I wouldn't so be bad. surprised if, like, when he was licking that knife, he, he cut his tongue, and that's what did it. That was the exact amount needed. Had he not licked the knife. Kuroki would have lost at least one to two fingers. So, uh, yeah, that's that's it for that plot point, because Tenji was the one who told who told the Tomodachi game people. So he showed up with the with the cavalry and Tenji was like and then they were like, well, you guys got to get got to deal with a real criminal. Shibe and they've got Shibe uh, tied up. How did now this is my one problem. Um, how did how did they get him? How'd they get Shibe from the cops? I mean, they, they've already shown that they have their hands in the police at this point. Because, yeah, like, like uh, Shiho's, like, dad works with them. And obviously he works with the Tomo game people. It's really weird because, like, why does, why does uh, Shiho's dad work for the Tomodachi game people? I don't know. You know? You might know. And you might just be trying to 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 misdirection me maybe i don't know it's it's weird it's hard to it's hard to get so but then anyway. i'm going to cut off here we get to the ending of this episode yuichi's being taken to the hospital and then kokorogi and tenji are together and they're like okay well it's time for the next game and they're like <sighs> what and it's like yeah shibe he's in this comedically hilarious looking prisoner outfit and they're like okay if you want to get him back, yeah, we can get him back for you, but we are going to get saddled with a shit ton more yen in debt. And the next game is going to be a class trial. Someone play the DL6 theme from Ace Attorney here. Oh my god. <laughs> Phoenix crying. He's like, I didn't steal the money. I didn't steal the money. I didn't steal any of the money. And then and then Tenji's like, I stole the money. And then Larry Butts <laughs> and then Larry Butts is like, I stole the money. <laughs> it was definitely Larry Butts. One hundred percent it was Larry Butts. Oh god, but now they're literally just being like, what if Dongan Rompa though? I tried to defend you saying you weren't Dongan Rompa and then you just become fucking Dongan Rompa? It's Tomodachi game. What do you want, man? I'm furious. I'm still furious. And that was the last episode we're probably ever going to get. Yeah, that's where they end the fucking season. Right there. And then we just nothing, nothing. It's done. There is no more Tomodachi game. We're probably if we somehow get another season of this, I will actually be fucking shocked because that web series because it's a web series. It didn't get a lot of money. So like they would have had to have pushed hell of volumes somehow. And I doubt that this pushed volumes. Just saying. However, if we do get more cool, I'm, I'm probably just going to read the manga. Because the manga seems really cool. Speaking of cool things that you should rather read the manga, um, no, I forgot about our next thing. Is it time for? It's time. It's time for Ruby, dude. <clears throat> All right. So I I would like to give a quick little opener on my end, and then you two can give your own openers afterward if you so wish. Mm. Well, we should also talk about how the core is over for Tomodachi game. We don't know when it's coming back. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like, just it. Like, I don't know when it's coming back, and that's just where they end the season. Like, yeah. yeah, so so don't expect us to talk about this show at all until either the manga ends or the show is announced to have more stuff. 
No, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I, I had thought that was implied. If, if we get but more, Lana's I assume like, we're no, going to be talking about sure. it. I'm covering no. my bases. Fuck you. Well, you're jumping. So, that is the, true. But, but like the thing, but like the thing is like Tomodachi game, like it's we're now we're not watching it. Now it's not that we're not watching it because we hate it. It's we're not watching it because it doesn't exist. <laughs> the Tomodachi <laughs> game has stopped existing. The Tomodachi game is not real. All right. So, real, so the so Ruby Ice Queendom released three episodes. Three yes. episodes at once. So we were able to replace Jujutsu Kaisen now that it's over. Yeah, I will. I will say, um, because because of how this was premiered, though, um, there is a little bit of a uh, controversy behind that because uh, Rooster Teeth just didn't say that it was out for like four hours before someone was was literally like adding their helpline, being like, "Why didn't you say anything?" And then an hour later, they were like, "Oh yeah, it's up." By the way, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's really bad. Huh. I I had not even heard yeah, of that. If, if you want to look up the, uh, the the tweets and everything, like I'm sure if you look up like Ruby Ice Queendom Roots or Teeth premiere, like you'll find it somewhere. I mean, kerfuffles can happen a lot in social media management. The issue like, is that this is not like a new thing for Rooster Teeth, like specifically for Ruby. Like they've done they've done this before, just not advertising their shit. Again, social media kerfuffles can happen. Like it's fucking. That to me just seems like a social media manager that might have just been like asleep on the uh, asleep at the wheel. Yeah. Aside from that, though, the show itself, I liked it. I thought it was it was it's got a really nice start to it. Well, before um, we start talking about the show itself, I wanted to go into something. All right, by all means. So, I wanted to kind of talk about Ruby in general in terms of how everyone like was exposed to the show what is your level of oh. like Ru what is your ruby knowledge stat if you will well. and the first thing i'm i'm going to open with this is all right i've seen all the trailers i have played blaze blue cross tag battle and i watched the first episode of ruby and outside of uh that shot where you have the music playing in her headphones and then it turns into like the actual main thing and that fight scene that happens immediately afterward being really cool. I thought it was like one of the most cringe things I've ever seen. And I'm just like, nope, I can't watch Ruby. I, I literally start. I literally dropped it after the first episode. <laughs> like, I remember watching this in a public library. Being like, oh, wow, this is an anime made by that Monty Ohm guy and the red versus blue people. Oh, this is going to be great. And then I got to the ending of the episode and me who was like 14 at the time was like, this is cringe. I can't do this. And so I moved on with my life and began and continued watching Naruto. I full, I wholeheartedly believe that Ruby would have been a significantly better show if the voice acting was exactly a little better. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think the voice direction for the show really did a lot of damage to the show's legitimacy. On that note, I've got up to volume four and then I rage quit. Oh my god. Yeah. So I I'm held the on one. a long, long time. Like I way got, longer I admit, than I should. Volume have. four is absolutely like a long time to hold on. Like if you made you made it to the end of volume one and you said, I'm gonna keep going. And then you went to the volume end of volume two when you said, All right, volume three. And you watched so, volume three, and then you said, Fine, I'll do four. So vo or no, so here's so here's how things went down. I, w I watched volume one and I went, eh, it's new, whatever. Uh, and I was what, 17? Yeah. Um, so, so I was like, okay, that's it. And then, uh, volume two came out and I was like, kind of hyped for it because like, I remember the music being good. It had been a little bit since I'd seen it. I was like, let's give it, let's give it an honest chance. Maybe I, maybe I was a little hard on Ruby. Uh, and then episode one of volume two happened, and I was like, this show fucking sucks. And then and then I got and then I got like halfway through volume two and I was like, I'm gonna let it finish. And that and then it and then volume two finished, I watched the whole thing and I was like, okay, it was really boring. But like at least the action sequences were okay. Yeah. 
And I got to volume three, and I think this is after Monty died. Yep. So, uh, so I watched volume three, and volume three I was excited for. There, there was a lot. Of, I knew the tournament was coming. I was like, you know, this is this is their chance to really win me back. Uh, I like the saxophone guy. The saxophone guy oh, is so yeah. cool. I like the saxophone guy. I like uh, Dude, their team's name was Team Funky. That's cool. I li- I like that. I think I think again, Ru- Ruby, great ideas, bad execution. Like yeah. so, so, so I watch so I watched through that, and then I was like, let's let's finish volume three. This is this is fine. I finished volume three, and I was like, well, I understand why everyone's freaking out, but like, who cares? Who gives a shit? Why do we give it? Why do we give so much of a shit? The show sucks. I was about to say, is volume three the one where Ruby became the Avatar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the one where everything happened. The yeah. episode where everything happened. Uh, and then volume four, I was watching it because, like, somebody told me it got better and then it didn't. And I was like, well, I mean, weeaboos lie. And uh, then I stopped. And I and I watched a couple sequences from, like, newer episodes because, peop- because they kept showing up on my YouTube algorithm because that's how YouTube works. And uh, I watched them to their completion and I was like, these suck, too. They're better. Yeah. But 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 like but like they're not redeemably better. And I also think that they're sh- like now that even though that now that they have shading, I just think that everyone's faces look like uh clay. So I mean, it- I I still am under the belief that like they need someone who's like a dedicated lighting director for that show. Yeah. Cuz they just use like the most canned looking lighting for a lot of those scenes and it always comes off as just hella awkward. Like they really just need better color grading, um, and they need to recast their entire voice cast. Yeah, not the entire cast. Whoa. Yeah, Pure, Pure is dead. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That was the only one. <laughs> Torchwick and Pira are both dead. <laughs> oh my god! They're both dead. The only two voice actor, like people, like besides like special guest appearances. Yeah, the ones that are like actual voice actors, like Christina V, like Yuri Lowenthal, and you know, you know, Pedos, like yeah. and, 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 and <laughs> as well. You know, yeah, because yeah. because we got those as well. Um, I mean, he did get recasted. Thank Se- God. Se- Sex Pest A from the Trigon. Sex Dump. Pest A. <laughs> yeah, the for, for Sex Pest A. Yeah, you're right. So. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, like I, 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 Ruby just left like a permanently bad taste in my mouth, and then I saw Ruby Rose announced in my favorite fighting game series, and I stopped playing that fighting game series. Damn, Damn. I stopped. BB Tag's a good game playing. though. Yeah, it is. I played it at a convention. It's a pretty good game. I would not purchase that game. What if I purchased it for you? And then we didn't play it. That sounds like a great idea. The game has rollback <laughs> now. That's cool. <laughs> but I have Central Fiction. Honestly, BB Tag's a better game. Don't at me. But I like Central Fiction. <laughs> yeah, one of those games has a Dachi in it. Oh my god, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <You're>... clincher. <laughs> Just just so you can play a dachi, I have to listen to Ruby Rose's voice acting. Hey, I, no, I play you. her in Japanese. Yeah, I was gonna say play her in Japanese, you get to say Sorry Ayami. <laughs> so let me so let me open up with the one thing that got me to actually lean in and pay attention during Ruby Ice Queendom. Hmm. It was a Japanese dub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that the the second it started, I was like, huh. I don't want to kill Ruby Rose. I don't want to kill Yang. That's awesome. And then, and so, and then I started watching the show. And then it was standard affair Ruby. But before like, we go any further, I would like to to open the floor to the person wearing the Ruby shirt. Yeah. So the guy wearing the Ruby shirt, I I also have like a toque somewhere. I've got volume one on DVD. And uh, because of course I do, I also have the compendium because, uh, yeah. What, what comes with volume one on DVD? Um, What's on it? It's just, vo- it, it's just those episodes. There's a couple of like Easter eggs. There, there's one menu I remember where if you press, if you like press on a certain thing, it's a remix of uh, the one line of the guy going, they got carded. They took carded. 
That's a so shame. I'm not even kidding. That's a shame because Rooster Teeth used to have like really good DVDs. Like they'd have like they'd be packed with like a bunch of extra like stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to get unless you had like Rooster Teeth Premium or whatever or uh-huh. members. I think their DVDs got a bit better after like the first few volumes, but I only ever got volume one because I'm like I'm not <clears throat> putting money into DVDs. Yeah, hard um, doubt because that's around the era that Rooster Teeth became a company instead of just a bunch of people making shows. So like they're probably so after that they probably just had standard affair DVDs. Well, I was shit, it's a, yeah. that, that's a shame. I was hoping there'd be like a creator's commentary or something because like that sounds fun. Creator commentaries are also always just like a wonderful little affair. But um, yeah. the thing I but, have to uh, ask you, Kai, is how faded is that red on that fucking shirt? Oh yeah, no. So I've had this shirt literally since it like was it was released and when I was in high school. Like this, this is an old, old goddamn shirt. But uh, yeah, that's so can, faded, dude. That that red is so faded. It's like a pink. No. <laughs> Now, this is something I, wa- I guess we should ask Kai if he wants to do. Do you want to review Ruby Ice Queendom like we don't know what the fuck is happening? Oh, like for the- man. Or do you, or do you want to review Ruby Ice Queendom as a let's talk about the things that are different? I think that like you and I can talk about the things that are different because like th- this is Nick. Really, I would say this is your basically your first time going in. Other than the, the H-Bomber guy video, I don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah, but, so yeah, like, but you know everything that happened this season from the H Bomber guy video, right? Yeah. 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 This was basically just those three episodes were basically just season one of Ruby. I'm just Which gonna I say love. right now, I would I want to look at this anime personally as Ruby standing on its own because it's very much apparent that they're like, we want this to stand on its own. Yeah. Like I, I'm well, getting I, that message. So I, I see this as not Ruby 2. This is Ruby Blue. Like, like, like this is actually this is this is this is just another version of Ruby, but instead of Ruby, we're following Weiss more. So it's Blueby? Yes. Uh well, if it's well, if it's Ruby, but starting with Weiss, wouldn't it be Warubi? Warubi. Uh Werby. Werby. No, 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 it's, it's Werby. Ruby. No, it's it's Ruby, but um the R, uh the B, the Y, they're lowercase, and uh the W is is uppercase. Uh, because, because she's above them. She No, yeah, I, I like I like it being Werby, but instead of the R standing for Ruby, it stands for racist. <laughs> There's it's it's rate it's racist white it's racist Weiss, uh, based, uh, Yang. Yeah, racist Weiss, based Yang. Yang. Oh my god, I just thought, I just thought about it. Like you know, we're not gonna know for a while, but like, are we gonna get an adaptation of that the, the fucking food fight? Now you you mentioned it, just mentioning Yang. All, all I can think of is that 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 fight where she just got the fucking chickens on her hands. I hope that they don't do that. <laughs> I hope that they do. I hope that I hope that actually no, maybe in two D it'll be funny. Yeah, maybe maybe in two D the joke will actually hit. <laughs> like it's, well, because then it, it's it, like literally just them using like food to fight, and then it, and you know it doesn't look a little bit janky. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have uh, the mocap problem. Yeah, I also because I never actually explicitly said it, I should say that my uh, experience with Ruby, I am caught up. Um, I, I mean, like, I'm, I'm caught up with the main series. I'm, I haven't seen, you know, all of the, the offshoot shit. I've seen a little bit of Ruby Chibi, and uh, yeah, Ruby Chibi used the characters better than the actual show. It, they it does. admit it too. That yeah. they talk uh, from what I've seen of Ruby Chibi and what people have told me about Ruby Chibi. The show is very aware that nobody likes like their characters in their show, or at least like a lot of the fans who like fell off. And then they're like, and and so they're like, they play it towards gags, but like, here's the issue with that: How do you get people who left because of the gags that you're doing to come back and watch your gags? Isn't you that? Don't. It's just exactly like, so it's really weird. It's just weird to me, but it does work. The people who are still consuming the content do like it. Like, and uh, the and again, like the only reason I feel weird about Ruby now, like the only reason I never picked it back up after it finally fixed that one thing in the art style I didn't like, which was that everyone felt like they weren't in the same room. Um, now they all look like they're in the same room, and the room looks like it's from a scene in Heavy Rain. 
Oh God, Jason. So just like everyone seems kind of like clay like. So I don't know. Uh, there, there's, there, there's, there's areas where that's gone well, like uh, until dawn. Yeah. If anything, I, I'll say about like you know the current series of Ruby, like the fights do get better. Yeah, like, I've heard the fights get a lot yeah. better, and I've seen and the like, fights get a lot better. I, I've watched a couple of them with Nick, and the one that sticks out to me, there's two of them. There's the one where they're, they're, they're um, it's Crow and um, oh god, it's the guy who has like his semblance is Luck, and it's, it's them versus the Scorpion guy. And you know, like that fight's really good. There's the other one where um, uh, Ironwood is like he's having this like Sonic, like a Sonic Adventure, like crazy gadget, like weird gravity fight with this other guy. Oh yeah, the the gun the gun fight. Yes. Yeah, you could just say the gun fight. The I know what you're talking fight. Yeah, about. Yeah, no, it's it's that that's a good fight. See, I the, the big thing with that is you know. It, that entire fight just kind of looks like they're running on treadmills. Oh, it does. It absolutely it's, does. It's, it takes me out of it so fucking hard. I think that like some of the the more intimate shots they had in that fight were like that. That's that's where I'd say is like the heart of what makes people want. But it makes makes me want to keep watching Ruby. At this point, I will say. I mean, we're in volume nine. This is another Voltron situation for me. I'm like, I am so many seasons in. I'm just gonna fucking just show me the ending. Just, I, just I can tell you it. right now, Kai, sunk cost fallacy is not real. It cannot hurt you. You can, it's like, if you don't like it, hit the brakes. You yeah, can leave. leave. But now I think getting into actual uh, Ice Queendom here. Um, so I can say right now, after watching those first three episodes of Ice Queendom, this is not cringe. Yeah, it's fine. There's uh there's no like weird scenes. Uh the pacing's pretty good. Um I don't hate like seeing a lot of like certain characters interact that I originally did. Um and all the and all the emotional beats still hit like that they want to hit, you know? So the there there's a couple of things that I would actually like to bring up. One of which is this is made by Studio Shaft. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't know, Studio Shaft is the studio responsible for the Monogatari series. They were responsible for Mikaku City Actors. They were responsible for Hitamari Sketch. And they were responsible for a lot of shows. Madoka. Madoka Magic. But I was about to get to that. We're getting into the show that they were responsible for that a lot of people are going to know. And probably the thing that's the most influential to Ruby is Puella Magi. Maroka Magica. And uh, I can't believe that in order to make Ruby something I wanted to watch, you just turn it into Madoka Magica. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is. There is literally a plot point where they introduce their own original character, Do Not Steal. Her entire point is to take the darkness out of people's dreams and to contain it into a small seed looking uh, device. Uh, and I'm just like, wow, it's, it's literally a grief seed. They're literally pulling the exact same plot point from Madoka Magica. And I'm about it. Turn Ruby into a Maho Shoujo. Replace witches in Madoka with fucking, um, you know, just dream grim. That's exactly. What it is. They literally added a, a new like species of grim for this character. That's it's that, fucking that's, great. That's the catalyst. Maybe, maybe now that we have someone who analyzes this new species of grim, we'll actually find out what the heck the grim are. Maybe. Other than just being a black tar pit. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, so so the character who does this their name is Shion Zaiden. So their thing and and like as they said they're uh they're called a nightmare hunter and they and they trap grim that possess humans. Um and the first time they show up, so I think this is in episode 2 of the show. Um they're saving uh Jean who has been uh influenced by one of these grim. Um so Jean's so Jean's like heart is becoming like darkened and like he's giving in to like all of his inner insecurities. It's basically making you like fight your shadow in the TV world in Persona 4. 
essentially like, and then we also get this little shot of him inside of his mind and he's just this cat boy we just, just a get a tiny this... little boy wearing a, a, a bunny onesie yeah it's a t- tiny tiny onesie with 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 cat ears and i'm just like wow wow i, I can't believe miles luna's oc has gotten such a glow up it's absolutely incredible <laughs> So apparently uh, they don't send – so when they send – so the way that they uh, rescue Jean is by sending the rest of Team Juniper in to save him. And they do it off screen because that would be weird to battle inside someone's heart, I guess. They just couldn't go full Kingdom Hearts with it. Uh, but but they do say it's like the uh, they're sending the hearts of others into the sleeper's dream. So like it's – so it's like they're – it's like uh, they literally Kingdom Hearts dived – uh, all of Team Juniper into Jean, and I don't want Nora messing with my brain. So honestly, bad idea, folks. Real bad idea. A real bad idea. Um, but but Pira was there, so it's all okay because we did this in Volume One, which was a good idea. Um, <laughs> uh, because that so so big big spoily opes for Ruby Ice Queendom, I guess. Uh, thank God they did this. They just cut the card and bullying arc. They just cut it out. They Cardin just replaced shows it. up, yeah, in one scene where he's beating the shit out of Jean and never again. And then immediately afterward, Joan gets the explanation of, "Oh, hey, here's how your powers work, idiot." And it's so, and so bam. they get everything. They get everything out of the way. We don't have to deal with like elongated exposition because uh, they're treating us like anime watchers, where we just kind of accept things as we're learning about them. Yeah. Uh, also, they talk about semblances. So remember, in the beginning scene where Ruby knocks the guy or not knocks the guy away and then jumps out the window. Yeah. Um, in the original. Mm-hmm. So in the original, it's while that one song is playing on her headphones, and then it gets louder, and then she clicks it off after doing a cool pose thing, which is one way to do it. But the anime did it in a way that was a little cooler, I think. Um, do the same thing. Have her knock the guy away. But when she flies through, it cuts to Torchwick, and Torchwick goes, a semblance, Beacon Academy student. Like, so that means we have been introduced to semblances. We have been introduced to Beacon Academy with more words than what Ruby did because they did the red trailer over kind of, but like with a little bit more tact Mm -hmm. in that we actually got to meet Ruby and talk to her. Um, But because it was Japanese dub, we didn't immediately have our brains implode. And maybe, maybe in anime dubs, uh, over the over the mocap when they go to English dub with this, if they go to English dub with this, it might sound better because I think Ruby's voice actor is like okay in tag battle sometimes. It's just there's times where they aren't. I think so she like, has improved quite a bit, honestly. I think she's signi- much better. Yeah. So like, so like there could be some differentiations now that we're looking at this through like the gla- the hindsight glasses that are uh, the original Ruby run. So. Like, a lot of my problems that I personally had that made me fall, like, really hesitant about Ruby could be falling off with this anime adaptation. And uh, the and one of my least favorite arcs with what was my favorite character at the time, Jean, is now gone. So now I don't have to think about the fact that my character is just a wuss. At least now I at least, and, and now I have more faith in Team Juniper's ability to be a support system to make him into a better character. Also, they just throw Jean to the wolves this time without ha- without any of the bullshit. Yeah, pretty they, they, much. They, they, there's a lot of scenes where they just throw him to the wolves. No bullshit about it. Like, if you solve it, you solve it. If you die, you die. And he's just like, oh, okay. And like, and that's that's a good way to put a, make a wuss strong. Like, which is something they were having a big problem with in the original volume. That's what you have to Jean do. Jean, when he's not written by Miles Luna, is 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 a good character. I want to say most characters not written by Miles Luna tend to be better characters than if they're written by Miles Luna. Oh man. I think Miles did a very good job setting up Jean in the in the very beginning of the first volume. I think that I think that everything afterwards was a little clunky, uh but they got him back on track when they finally killed Pira. Yeah. In this case, they kept him on track and now maybe because this plot is a little wacky, maybe she doesn't have to die. Maybe maybe we can Maybe we can have our most popular characters actually do something for once instead of just kind of throwing them to the wolves. So this is kind of older, but like we actually did get some uh, some designs of like Team Juniper and and uh, them like later on in this show where, you know, they're all in like snow attire. 
That's cool. So, so hmm. like, and so as far as we know, Pira will survive longer than she should have. Okay, that's kind of neat. Or they go on another trip because this canon's kind of diverging. Yeah. Or this is, or instead of me thinking that this is Eva, Eva Rebirth, this is Eva 1.0, 2.0. Yeah. Are you thinking this is a sequel to the original well, movie? Okay, so remember, funny remember, according fuck. to them, it's not a parallel timeline or whatever. It's an alternate. What, what was the fucking term they used? Oh, it's an AU. A, yeah, it's, it's an AU. It's, yeah. it's, not it's an just AU. an AU. Yeah. It's not an AU, or it, we need to ignore any of the press that Rooster Teeth <laughs> yeah, gives exactly. us. Yeah. Ignore it. Just ignore it. Just whatever your head canon is for Ruby Ice Queendom is better than whatever they have on the internet to tell you. Yeah. That that is that is a fact. You will like this show more if if you just believe in those solemn statements. So Ruby Ice Queendom, I think it's pretty good. I want to say so real quick, uh, because we're talking about this, and I just wanted to give my thoughts on sure. all of this, yeah, is that means. from someone that has seen a lot of the cool stuff from Ruby, but has not subjected themselves to actually having watched Ruby, um, this is getting to see Shaft in rare form, because I feel like with a lot of Shaft shows, you're either getting incredibly high concept art pieces in the form of PowerPoints or you're getting like Madoka Magica where they're allowed to actually go nuts with their budget. With this, this feels a little closer to Mad Madoka Magica than it does to Mikaku city actors or Monogatari. And like the first fight scene that Ruby has and like the fight scene with the gigantic bird grim. I know when I was watching this with everyone, uh, I, I was like, remarking in that it felt like the type of animation that you would see on the internet in like 2015 or like 2010 on like Nico Nico where they're like, Oh, we're going to go fucking nuts. It's the type of animation that looks like it was made by one fucking guy and just, but it's something that took him like two to three years to finish. And it looks so good. And like, I, I, if, if there's anything that bugs me about this show, it's that these money shots that you're getting have such stark contrast between just the normal shots. Because a lot of the normal shots are relatively flat. They look good. They're using relatively normal gradients for everything. And then you get these shots that are incredibly dynamic, incredibly expressive. And you get these very hard shapes for shading and i'm just like oh my god it looks so good but it looks so different so you can tell when they're turning it on and when they're turning it off and that's not too much of a detractor for me but it is something that i definitely noticed however i will say right now that when this show turns on the sakuga gears they turn on the fucking Sakuga gears. They, they knew exactly where to put it too. Like it's not like they're giving us like really good animation and weird spots. Yeah, like we we got them in literally like in all all the fights and and when when Weiss fought the boar, when um, they fought the Nevermore before that. Um, of course, Ruby fighting uh, Junior Thugs or sorry, Roman Thugs. Yes. Um, and then at at the at the end, I guess what was the, what would be the last one? I know there was one more. No, that was basically it because you it? Get, you get the scene with like well, I mean I guess there's uh the black trailer technically. Yeah, there's there's some stuff with uh Blake's inter introduction with Adam. I guess yeah, because they remake the white and black trailers in this episode. Yeah, and they do a really good job with the black trailer. I feel but it it was better than the actual black trailer. There yeah, was audio mixing. You had, you had made a uh, one note about how um it was kind of huge that we actually got to hear from Adam after Blake had left. Yes. Yes. Uh okay, so that that does bring me cuz you talked about the Sakuga. Uh the the reason that I was really edged like on edge, sorry, wow. Uh really on edge about like Ruby Ice Queendom when we started watching it was solely because I think Ruby looks ugly. But when Ruby's doing that like rotoscope motion that she kind of has to do because of the her weapon of choice, she looks fine. See, I think Ruby looks completely fine. I literally to me, I think she just looks like more of a puppy. 
Yeah, maybe the gray eyes just make me kind of, like, unsettled by her facial expressions. Because I feel like her face isn't really doing anything. I, I feel like a lot of characters' faces aren't really doing anything. I think Team Juniper have uh, incredible facial range in this style, in this art style. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I feel like everyone that isn't named uh, Yang, and even Yang for that case, are having a lot of trouble looking like they have any sort of feelings in this look. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, no, I, I think what you might be actually talking about there, that's also kind of a weird Shaftism, where there are definitely shows by Sh Studio Shaft where a lot of the time the expressiveness of characters can be kind of... I don't want to say subtle. Flat? They, they definitely can be a little flat sometimes, I feel, with the way that they do it. But it goes from show to show. Because there are some scenes in Monogatari that go fucking nuts. But then you get Makaku City actors. And then there are some scenes in Makaku City actors where characters look fucking nuts. And then there are some scenes where I want to die. So I'm going to say that it's an acquired taste. And that I am learning to deal with the fact I don't think Ruby looks very good. Because I think everyone else looks fine. I, I, th I, th I think everyone else all in all looks fine. I think uh, I think Weiss, uh, her facial expressions looking a little flat in certain scenarios is overcome by the fact that they went out of their way to make her look more angry or more delight or more delighted in more in scenes that she was just annoying in the original. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. There's a lot different about Weiss's character, and even just how like certain characters react to stuff, like how. Um... I, I know uh, this was a lot earlier. I noticed this back in the trailer, uh, how Ruby actually says in Vice Queenum that she hates Weiss upon, uh, you know, when they're in the forest talking to each other for the first time. And in the original, you know, Ruby's just more like, ah, you're you're so mean, you're so bullying me. Like, it, it's more of that thing. That could be a dubism, though. Um, no, this is, this is like more actually, like you could see on Ruby's face, like she's like, I, you are rude. I hate you. Like disgusted. Yeah, she literally said like like I that Jedi. Like she hates her, and it's like, and that that was what kind of made me be like, wow, shit. Like there was a like there was actually a moment where she reacts to that in the, the anime. Not I get you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're definitely wanting to sell the emotional like impact of it more, which you know I, I I can understand that just for the sake of the show, just like oh I actually have an emotional impact. Maybe make Weiss realize that she feels like shit. Oh my god. Maybe they'll give us like Cinder, like her story, but actually make us care because we 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 got Cinder's backstory in a recent season and it was shit. It was terrible. No, like you, there's no way to make you care because they, they they literally you know they they made her like oh yeah the Cinderella like you know the the stepsisters and the stepmom and that, but it like they wrote a whole ass song and a montage to make you try to care about Cinder and it's terrible. Damn. The, if the anime makes us try to care about Cinder, they'll do it right. Speaking of the anime and like the differences, there's one more thing I want to point out. And this is something I had to ask you guys because I didn't recognize this. I'm like, wait, weren't they supposed to go to the school first? And then all of a sudden you realize they're all getting dumped out of a plane as they're going to the school. And you're like, wait, what? This is the Hunter exam? Are you telling me this is Madoka Magica and Hunter Hunter and it's the same show? Yeah, they did just kind of put them in there, and that was probably for the best. It's yeah. so much better. It it just gets things moving. Like, you don't have to pussyfoot around with characters having, like, their water cooler talk. Because that doesn't make for a good show. At least well, not I mean, for, like, an action show. Like, yeah. you don't want, like, office-style antics in a show where people are wanting to, like, throw hands with scythes, you know? Well, that's why they cut all of the school stuff because, like, you don't need it. But they didn't cut all the school stuff. They cut most of the school stuff. Well, well they they cut the entire car, like Carden bit. Good, but but like that that's like it. Like there's a there's a bunch of shitty school stuff, but yeah. there is school stuff that has value. So like it is their job now to determine what school stuff has value and what school stuff doesn't. And in this case, they created new school stuff. So they believe that their new school stuff has value, which means that, like, I think, the, like, the dance will be redone, you know, yeah. and it, if, and, we, and we'll probably we see it more from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we will. We have fucking. How many episodes did they say we're definitely getting? We're getting 12. Mm -hmm. So. 
I think, considering we just finished all of Volume 1 in three episodes, we're probably getting through Volume 3. That is actually the hope. I would love to get through, like, Volume 3, because from what I've seen, Volume 3 is where the story starts. Yeah, each bomber guy uh, does say that. It, does he say that? <laughs> yeah, I actually yeah. forgot that that's what he said. Well, well, the, the volume three finale is when Ruby finally happens, like the yeah. show that we've all been waiting for, and then it just doesn't happen anymore. Oh, no. I just realized I fell into the trap of <laughs> nice opinion. Did a YouTuber give it to you? I fell for that trap. I'm actually in it now. It's over. My, yeah, but my not... personality is YouTube video essays. <laughs> But I'm not going to blow your brains out until it actually happens. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm allowed to live until the ending of Ice Queendom. Got it. <laughs> when, when September 18th comes around and and H Bomber guy is correct, then you have my permission to morb. <laughs> but that's most of the comments that I have to make. Ruby Ice Queendom, good? I like it a lot. Yeah. All right, then I guess then I guess that's it for now. Let's uh, let, I guess we gotta wait until the official release of episode four, which is July twenty fourth. Um, they did a premiere three days ago, so uh, we could watch it probably hmm. if we look hard enough. But uh, why don't we just wait until it comes out? H how about we wait until Ruby Ice Queendom is all out and then we watch all of it? Because this is a fast ass show. Honestly, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind doing that because, like, I like the format we just did, where we didn't even really go over the like exact, uh, you know, events of the three episodes. We just kind of talked about it as a whole. Yeah. Like we just talk about it in like in chunks or in arcs. I think that works. We. I think. I think now that we're done with Volume One, uh, now that we've seen what Volume One has to offer, we need to see what Volume Two has to offer before we can really make a decision. Uh, but I think that it would be really good for us if we waited until, like, we know when vol- at least, it's either, we do one of two things, we either wait until volume two ends, and then just watch all of volume two, and then wait until volume three ends and watch all of volume three, or we wait until September 18th, uh, September 18th, watch it all, and then review it. Well, we will definitely have to think about that. I'm thinking, uh, probably once volume two hits, like, the next three episodes, we could do that. Potentially, Leave yeah. your comments below if you liked our review of Ruby Ice Queendom or if that helped you maybe uh, incentivize to watch a show that has long since days gone by for you. Uh, let us know which uh, of these two ideas you think is better and uh, we'll we'll keep it up for consideration. But we'll end up uh, we'll end up making a decision sometime in the next couple weeks. We got we got two whole months to make that call. Well, speaking of uh, decision and making calls, I have to ask a question to Kai. What's up? Hey, Kai. What's up? Who is the Japanese voice actress for Ruby Rose? Saori Hayami. You want to know what else Saori Hayami is in? It's our favorite show, Spy Family. No. She's in Undernight in Birth. Oh, yeah. Five Head. No, she's actually also your forger in Spy Family. We're talking about oh. the last episode <laughs> of the core from Spy Family. Oh, we're off the 15-year-old. We can talk about the MILF. Thank God. Yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! So, sadly... Yeah, we, we, we... <laughs> Fuck! God damn it. This is the last Spy Family that we get in anime form until... August Boo! I quit! <laughs> All of Tomodachi game, and for what? <laughs> 101 chapters of hell. <laughs> Listen, what, we'll get we'll get Chainsaw Man soon. We can watch that instead. Yeah, we're getting Chainsaw Man. We're getting uh, we're getting a uh, biscuit leveling, hammer. Fucking. Um, Is there a yandere mom in Chainsaw Man? I mean, I haven't read it. I've, I've there's a uh, there's a lot in Chainsaw Man. <laughs> All right, there all right. is, I, I can't tell you what is specifically there, but there is a lot. So I, I feel like while we're on Chainsaw Man, Nick, you need- Makima's you need, not even you. the best girl. Well, yeah, speaking of Makima, I, 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 need, I need to know because I just keep seeing all these posts being like, man, Makima, Makima's fucking fat ass. She doesn't have a fat ass in the manga, does she? She does not. Everyone's lying. Kobeni is the best though. 
Colbany is actually the best girl in Chainsaw Man. Yeah, Everyone's we'll lying to, to themselves. All right, Definitely so so this is episode twelve of Spy Family. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, episode. T- so this episode was a little weird because we were built up to see Bond and then we didn't. You so know. that's actually one thing I kind of want to bring up is that uh, you can definitely tell that this was paced in uh, to be a 26 uh, episode show, a two core mm-hmm. show. And like, you can definitely tell that partway through production, they're like, look, we're putting a lot into this. It's not going to be ready in time. So we're going to have to take this break. And I think it was actually very brave of them to be able to let them take this break and not just put out a show that was going to just be only kind of okay. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, the show would not have gotten the level of prestige that it's gotten at this point, if it were only okay. So they definitely made the right call, but it definitely makes for the weekly viewing experience of watching episode 13 and then not having any more for a while being kind of left at a weird point. Because I was expecting, like, the beginnings of, like, Bond getting introduced. But instead, we just get the episode where Anya gets a giant penguin and uh, Lloyd is revealed to be a terrible father. Well, the neighbors are gaslighting him to think he's a terrible father. That's what I was meaning, yeah. Well, they're they're catting with each other. They're not – it's not like they're going up to Lloyd and telling him he's a terrible father because they don't have the balls. Yeah, he's like, not gaslighting. They uh, they are they are cat lighting. Yeah, similar uh, I, similar to gaslighting. Lloyd is Lloyd is somebody who has so for as confident as Twilight poses himself to be, Lloyd uh, Lloyd does not have a very good self esteem. No, and it's just because and it's and part of that is because he can't really read like what's actually necessary for Operation Strix or not. Because, again, he doesn't really have, like, a family, you know? Like, this is his first family experience. Um, And to be honest, like, if I was in Lloyd's position and I knew the fate of the world depended on it, I'd probably be in a similar sort of peril, you know? Yeah, if Shinzo Abe comes to your door and is like, look, you have to up the birth rate or the country is going to be destroyed, hell yeah, you're going to be panicking. Yeah, and he's just like, I need to find the most beautiful, kick-ass woman in the world. And then he finds uh, a, a woman who, according to their daughter, uh, is really good. Is really good at is really strong, but not good at much else. <laughs> <laughs> Anya was so fucking mean. But when is she not mean to Yor? Yeah, I mean, she did the same thing when they were in the castle in episode five. Oh my god. It's funny because in Anya's adolescence, uh, there's go. I feel like there's going to, if they get that far, I mean, I feel like there's going to be like a sense of like, of like Anya's very uh, defiant, and then all of a sudden, like Anya is going to be like best fucking friends with Yor forever, like more than more than Lloyd. Even yeah, straight up, straight up. She's going to. They're going to come to an understanding at some point, and it is going to be fucking beautiful. But uh, speaking of understanding, Lloyd is going to have to try his best to come to an understanding with the fact that he might not be as bad of a a dad as he thinks he is, but everyone thinks he's a bad dad. So he's exhausted. He's been having to work hella overtime uh, because all of the spies are either captured or dead or too afraid to enter the country. So he's been having to take all of their jobs. Or busy. Yeah, or busy. And so at this point, he hears them talking. Oh, that Lloyd Forger guy. Oh, he's never around for his family. I think he's cheating on his wife. He's like, oh, that's not good. I, I don't want people to get on to me. And so he crashes through his home. He's exhausted. And he's like, we're doing things this weekend. They do a very, very funny bit where like as he walks in and is like, we're doing these things. He like walks up to everyone. He's got full confidence because he's fucking Lloyd and that's how he is. And then he just wobbles a little. Yeah, he just sort of wobbles <laughs> yeah. a bit. It's really subtle. And then afterwards, he puts the kayfabe right back up. But it's such a subtle little bit of character animation. Yeah, and, and then we see my really favorite good. drawing of all time: penguin with gun. Penguin with gun. Not just any gun. A silenced pistol. That's true. So Anya knows exactly what she wants. <laughs> 
but essentially Lloyd and them are like, okay, we're going to go to the aquarium this weekend. And he's exhausted, but he's like, ah, you know, maybe I'll be fine with this outing. And then he looks over at the convenience store and he's like, are you fucking shitting me? You, what do you mean? I have another mission. No. And he walks up to the lady and she's like, Lloyd or twilight, uh, good afternoon. Or should I say good evening? And then he's like, I don't care. I'm not doing this mission. I have I to just go want to I just want my coffee and juice, please, for my family. And then she keeps like trying to guilt him into it. And he's just like, I want my coffee and juice. Are you sure? I want my coffee and juice. You, this is perilous. The, the country, they're going to be throwing the super weapon out. We're going to get so fucked. I want my coffee and juice. He's like, it's like Twilight, please. The fate of the world. Even Operation Strix is at stake. And he just goes, She's like, Argh. And then all of a sudden, Anya just screams on the platform like, yeah, we got to be late. It's going to close. He's like, yeah, well, the aquarium's not going to close. And then the lady's like, oh, you're going to the aquarium? Oh, perfect. Perfect. Then, yeah, they're at the aquarium. That's, and that's he's just like, is. God damn it. So, so Lloyd they're... has been gaslit into taking more overtime. Well, I mean, he did. Uh, he did. He did rent a castle. He did indeed rent a castle, but you know what? That was a business expense. Th- then this is yeah, but like you gotta pay for the business expense somehow. That's a lot of money. Yeah, you know what? That's the company's problem. That's not the employee's problem. Overtime. <laughs> So yeah, he he finds out that there's a penguin with a uh, with a thing in its in its throat. It is a reel of film with the plans for this super secret super secret super weapon. And the plans have been hidden inside of a penguin's throat. So Lloyd is like, "Okay, Ah, I'm going to hang out with my family. We're going to go to the penguin exhibit. I'm going to find which penguin has the plans. Huh? And then I'm going to get those plans. It'll be easy peasy. And I'll get to spend time with my family. Two birds with one stone. Twilight. Remember, if you hit too many birds, you could get the bird flu. Okay. If I hit too many birds, I might get the bird flu. Got I'm it. so I'm sorry, Lloyd, <laughs> but the mission can't be completed without you. Operation Strix is in your hands. Lloyd, you're like the uh, what's the guy's name that he's friends with? Frankie. Frankie. Like Frankie. Yes, Frankie. 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 Frank. Yeah. Frankie. Frankie. I'm in the I'm in the building. Fr- Lloyd, you're like the most badass son of a bitch I've ever met. <laughs> I've got all the info for you. Badass son of a bitch. Okay. So so would that make the colonel uh the one girl that leads his organization his handler or yeah, is the that colonel would be oh. the handler straight up. Or is that but what if it's still just Naomi Hunter? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have the handler as the colonel, Frankie is Master Miller, and then then Shut up, Lloyd, you're hurting my feelings inadvertently. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm being hit on oh, by the famous no. Lloyd Forger. Oh, no. I know who the Naomi Hunter is. Anyway, we need to watch the second core of Spy Family. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But uh, moving on. So they make it to the Penguin exhibit. But right before that, uh, Lloyd and Yor run into the family that was talking shit about him. Being like, oh, man, Lloyd's cheating. And then Yor is like, oh, you should come with us. And Lloyd's like, no, no, stop all of this in his mind. He doesn't want this to happen. And then Yor is like, if they come with us, then they'll get to see such that he's such a good father and that we're not suspicious at all. So once again, just a fucking comedy of errors. No one knows what the fuck is happening. Anya is laughing all the way to the bank because she's getting so much dirt she's going to be able to use once she turns 16. But they make it to the penguin exhibit and Lloyd's just like looking over. He can't see shit. And then Anya's like, hey, yo, Tosan, that cough, that that penguin, he's coughing. Looks like uh, something's up with him. And then Lloyd's like, oh, I'm going to go get some drinks, you guys. I'll be back in a bit. And so he knocks out the new guy that's starting a job, which real lucky that a new guy is starting a job today, by the way, in the penguin exhibit. 
and that Lloyd has the mask machine on standby for exactly this. Well, I mean, he always has the mask machine on standby. I Where wanna... is it? I want to see him make one. Butt I need cheeks. to know what that looks like. It's probably just embedded in his butt cheeks. He just tightens up? Yeah, it just tightens up and his face changes. Does Lloyd drive? Yeah. Yes, we see him drive in episode one. Yeah, he drives. Like he, so, no, but like he owns a car in this persona, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so like it could be in his trunk. It could be in his trunk. Uh, I still want to say it's smuggled. Well, in they, his didn't, they didn't drive at the Guarian, though. They took the train. Right. Fuck. <laughs> it's in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's in his ass. Or it's, it's in his hat. It's in his ass, or Frankie is just really on point today. Straight up. But they knock out this new recruit. Lloyd's disguised as this guy. And he goes to the penguin exhibit. And he's like, okay, I've learned the faces of all these penguins. I know their names. You don't have to worry about me. He has to make it through this army of penguins dynasty warrior style where he has to feed all of the fish all at once. It's like Tsubame Gaishi, but feeding penguins. Finally makes it to the sick penguin. Starts taking it to the infirmary. And then this dude shows up to him. And he's like, oh, yes, hello. Uh... That penguin is sick, and uh, I'm the doctor, so I'm the one that should be taking care of that penguin. And then Lloyd's like, excuse me, who are you? And he's like, oh, yes, I'm the doctor. And then Lloyd just like puts a little bit of water on the ID, and he's like, this ID is fake, and it's not even good. And then the dude pulls out a gun. Lloyd kicks his ass as hard as he can before the guy runs away. I and love like, that Lloyd is just an absolute savage who knows for a fact that this guy is the bad guy. Yes, he just knows. <laughs> He just knew he was he was so positive. This guy was a bad guy. He was like, I'm going to check this guy's ID. Now I'm going to be a piece of mega shit. And like it doesn't well, help. Even goes, this... goes in... Sorry, I was going to say, it also doesn't help that this dude looks like if you just tore off his skin, he'd, he'd just be Skeletor underneath. Like he looks like a piece of shit. Well, I unfortunately how... for him, he's jobbing to Twilight. Continue, Kai. Yeah, I, I was just saying, I, I love, I love like the the subtlety of like he he takes the ID, he sniffs it, and the guy's like, what the fuck? Why is he sniffing it? And then he pulls it out, does the water thing, and it's like, because I think it says that he was like FBI or something on the ID. Oh uh, no, it's that he's uh one of the managing scientists. Oh okay, okay. yeah. Yeah, the FBI would the yeah, FBI yeah. doesn't exist. I right, right, right. right. This what would it be the FBI? What would what would it be? It would be it be the, the fucking. Uh... <laughs> It's a fictional suddenly, country. Suddenly, the FBI. Suddenly, <laughs> the FBI. Ladies and gentlemen, so we got him. It's 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 not it's not Interpol. It's like Intergoal or something. No, here's the thing: the, what the actual agency would be is something we can't say on YouTube without getting demonetized. So that that's true. true. That's true. moving. That's right true. Along. Hey, uh, Lloyd can't go after this dude. And this dude's going to get all of his fucked up spy buddies. But Lloyd's like, I gotta take care of this penguin. So this guy's running. And then all of a sudden, while he's running, Anya just latches onto this dude's coat out of fucking nowhere. Comes Anya Forger from the top rope. And she's just literally hanging on from this really funny looking perspective shot. I think it might be my second favorite shot in the entire show. And then, well, not the entire show, but the entire episode. And then my favorite shot in the episode comes up right after where Yor sees what's happening. And she's like, how dare you abduct my daughter? And she just fucking Jayaku Hotengens this dude directly into the roof and just fucking kills this guy. The setting of which Spy Family takes place is the People's Republic of Ostania, which is a large country that borders the east of Westalis. The capital city of Ostania is, and you're not going to believe this, Berlin. No, oh, yeah, it I remember is. Berlin. Yep, it's Berlin just, with the T. Just making sure everybody knows, so we don't, so we don't have to say what they were trying to imply. We've got it all right here. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, this dude gets fucked up in this incredible shot of your just kicking this dude, like you know that leg up challenge. That it all that was like really popular on Twitter for a while. Oh, yeah. That's how she kicked this dude. This guy died. And so this guy's out of commission, and yours just like Anya, sweetie, we have to go. 
I hope I didn't kill this guy. Well, yeah, he well, he's like sticking out of the ceiling or something, and then just I'm just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, well, and, then, like, and then wow. Lloyd walks by and he also goes, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're both just like, wow. It's so fucking funny. And then uh your and Anya come back, and then that family is like, oh, that Lloyd oh, just such a terrible husband. And then Anya's like, uh, 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 and then Lloyd's like, oh hey guys, sorry I'm late. I had to do the penguin guessing game to win this gigantic penguin plushie, but it took me a while. And then Anya's like, you fucking liar. You got it in like one shot, but it's okay because you're my dad and you're you're allowed to lie. And you're about to hand this penguin to me and I'm going to say thank you, Papa. And we're going to be done with this conversation that I'm having in my head. Exactly. And she gets that penguin and it is like three times her size. I'm actually concerned that they're not feeding Anya enough because she's too tiny. Well, she's also like, you know, posing as six and she's actually four, right? She probably still like way tiny for a four year old IMO. Well, Anya's also like, oh, okay, Nick, it's not that it's not that tiny for a, I, as, as somebody who has uh, grown up with four four year olds over their life. Uh, that's not that small for a four year old. Maybe I was just a large four year old. Yeah, there's a lot of remember. Remember anime syndrome as well. Mm hmm. We, we know Jonathan uh, Josar. Yes, this is this is the other way. Yes, this is this is this the is opposite Koichi. of Jonathan <laughs> this is Koichi. Oh. This is Koichi, who is five foot two. If I I'd like to remind everyone, he's five foot two, and Josuke's five foot nine. Dude, I, I I often think about like just how small they made fucking Kobayashi after his arc was done. Oh my god, they made it the same size as Koichi, and it was and they just became gremlins. It's so fucking funny, dude. Oh, but then then we get. Anya just getting to fucking relax with the penguin and she's like oh shit okay it's time for the blood ritual of the peanut after my two stuffed animals consume this blood soaked peanut we shall be blood siblings forevermore and then she eats the peanuts and she's like okay now we're blood siblings forevermore uh so uh agent penguin I don't know what you do after that that's normally with the credits roll yeah exactly <laughs> So, Agent Penguin, Agent Chimera, I'm going to show you around the base. Uh, and so she's just, like, walking the penguin around. And she's just like, that's my dad. He's real smart. That's my mom. She's really strong, but she's not good at very much. And then yours, like, eh. And then she's about uh, to go into Lloyd's room. And then Lloyd snaps at her because, one, he doesn't want Anya to find out that he's a spy. But, two, he doesn't want her to set off a bomb and kill everyone. And so she starts crying because Lloyd, like, really snapped at her. And then Lloyd and Yor are like, oh, God, fuck what do we do? Oh, God, oh, fuck what do we do? And so they, they both, they grab a couple of Anya's toys. And then Lloyd's like, uh, yes, it is I, uh, Agent Penguin, and uh, we have an important mission, uh, Madam Anya. And then Anya's like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, we got to go to the candy store. There's, I hear there's some danger down there. Like, there's some terrorists and uh, and bad guys and, and bad guy terrorists. Yeah, no, we got to go there right now. And so you see them outside and Lloyd and Yor still have the toys on their faces. And Anya's just like hiding behind a wall wearing sunglasses. And she's just like, okay, we got to go to the candy store. Let's go. And then Lloyd's like, oh, yes, right, Madam Anya. And so they, they just end up buying Anya a, a, a bag of peanuts. And I'm just like, I can't believe this is how I'm going to be tricked into eventually having a child. I mean, I have a cat, so I, at this point, that's good enough. And that's all of Spy Family. The show's over. Show's over. There's no more Spy Family. There's no manga. Uh, there's a it. there's a there's a credit scene where it's like the end of the Breakfast Club, where it goes, "Don't you forget about me?" And it like and it like stop frames on every one of the characters. And uh, there, the only one I can remember is when they say uh, Anya died in the war against Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann in the Anti Spiral, uh, never to be seen again. Um, after Lloyd and uh, Yor officially get married, 
uh, your turns into like white, uh, white like flowers and just disappears. Oh, <laughs> oh yo, you're forgetting the most important part though, and that's when Lloyd teams up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in an attempt to bring his wife back to life. As Vanilla Ice plays a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles themed one one shot that he thought of on the fly with choreographed dancers. <laughs> That's that's exactly what happens. The spy family actually leads into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Yes. That's the uh, order is TMNT 1, Spy Family, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and 3, Rise of the TMNT, the original TMNT cartoon, Four Kids TMNT, and then it goes into Machete. Yeah, and then uh, and then your forger reprises her role as a mother in uh, Spy Kids One. Yes. Yeah. And then because that's all, canon to Machete. It yeah. all is a, it's a complete circle, complete circle. Yeah. Spy. Did you guys know that Spy Family is actually the anime adaptation of Spy Kids One? <laughs> no, it's an alternate universe. So, like, when we get to the Shippuden of, of Spy Family, it'll oh, just it's, be Spy Kids 1. Oh, it's the alternate universe where Anya doesn't die and instead we get Carmen? Yeah, it's like the alternate universe, Anya lives versus Anya dies. But remember, it's not an alternate <laughs> universe because Rooster Wait, Teeth told us so. You're right. <laughs> if if that, if that, if that uh, if Anya's Carmen, does that make Bond Junie? Oh, my God. And Good, good show. Good episode. I can't wait until October. And with that, I think we're basically done for the day. That's it. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back in like two weeks, potentially maybe three weeks. Depends. Uh, I have Comic-Con that weekend. So things might get really hectic for a little while. But it might just be a late. It might just be a later episode because uh, that'll yeah, also be around the time I'm leaving nationals. Yeah. Ah, so you know what? We're going to figure something out. But as usual, if you've hung around this long, thank you so much. I've been a little rusty, so I kind of forgot how to podcast and talk to people because depression sucks. Let me tell you, when, when sure. you're super introspective and the only people you've been talking to are your roommate, your cat and your inner demons. It's real hard, but I just want to say. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Lana, for helping me uh, just ramble about a bunch of bullshit. Thank you all for uh, watching us ramble about a bunch of bullshit. Uh, if you're interested in the stuff that we do, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that stuff. Follow us on Spotify. It's always just anything you can do is like really, really appreciative. Obviously, I'm Red Muffler Man, and you can follow me on Twitter and YouTube at Red Muffler Man. Kai? You can follow me at Cable Art on Twitter. Lana? You can follow me at Technotenor487. And with that, uh, I will probably see you all after San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, what are we going to be talking about? I don't know yet. We're going to figure that out. But I will catch you all later. Probably so. the Ruby uh, Justice League team up or whatever the fuck it was. Wait, does that come out? By then? I don't think. I don't know. Yeah, well, I was about to say, I then. thought that was months like away. Oh, yeah, right. Isn't that supposed to be like uh, for next year or something? Yeah, it's like next year. Oh, okay. Yeah, they just announced that it was happening. Well, we might get a trailer. We might. Like a Who visual. knows? But anywho, I am out. So have a good night, everybody. Take it easy. See ya. Later. <laughs>